So we've got our part here loaded in Mastercam. Now, one thing to mention about this introduction um, series that I'm doing right now is that this is a broad overview of Mastercam. The intent is to start here to progress to a little more intermediate level and then there will be advanced and several parts potentially per per <clears throat> level and then there might be some auxiliary videos getting into a little more detail about specifics like that configuration window up here where you can go in and you know make a lot of changes if necessary but we won't focus on that for now so we need a couple of things to happen here before we're able to actually start making toolpaths. Number one, we need to get our toolpath manager populated here with a group. Sometimes it'll come in with a group when you open a part directly, but sometimes it doesn't. So to do that, we go into machine. We just want to click mill and default. That's going to go ahead and create a mill group here. And you can see if I click open these, I have files, tool settings, and stock setup. And then magically, the tools, uh, sorry, the toolpaths have opened up here. So for simple two dimensional toolpaths, I've got contour, etc. A little more complex surfacing here, and then five axis stuff right here. I'm not really going to focus on five axis or 3D. For now, we're going to be focusing on the two dimensional. And again, you can see quite a lot of options here. As with most things in Mastercam, you only need to use what you need to use. So there are a lot of times all of this can feel overwhelming. Really what you need to do is just find what you need and stick to it. All right. <clears throat> so two things need to happen before we can actually commence toolpathing. All right. If you think about this in the Cartesian workspace, right? We've got X, Y, and Z. Our part, if we rotate, and if you're not familiar with CAD or CAM work, the way I'm rotating is pressing down the mouse wheel and panning around. I use a three-dimensional mouse in my day-to-day -day workflow, but I'm currently working remote, so I don't can't use that with a remote connection. So if we look at our part from the actual way that we're going to be machining it, we can see some tapped holes, an open pocket right there, and a closed pocket here on the floor, which we're going to have to machine. So what we want to do and what we need to do is get this face, sorry, to line up with this face. And the best and easiest way that i found to do it <clears throat> is with transform here, right? And this is how you move stuff. So before 2017 edition of this software, I believe, your only options were translate and translate to plane which means you can only move in one direction. It's really hard to get um, get it exactly lined up with where you want it. In the newer versions, we've got Dynamic Translate, which I really like, so I'll go ahead and select that. I'll select what I want to move, and Selection. Now I've got my Nomen that I can pick up and move. So let me go ahead, bring my part over a little bit. All right, so I'll... Um, a lot of times you can use a corner. I like the center of a part, typically. Just force of habit, you know, you can use your um, zero point here if you wanted. I'll just go ahead and show you how you can lock it, right? So it kind of clicks into place there. Similarly with points here, or you can even do centers of arcs, as you can see right there. Finds the center or the edge of the arc. Um, in this case, I can't really do this very easily with just a single click. So if I go to the auto cursor view here, there's a bunch of different ways that I can select, all right? So midpoint of two points is what I'm going to use this time. And I go ahead and I choose this midpoint. And I go ahead and choose this midpoint. You can see that light up there. And now it places it right in the center. So to actually move this part, I'll go ahead and click the very center anchor there, and I'll go bring it to the center at the origin. All right, now we're almost done, but we still need to rotate this part 90 degrees. So to do that, I can grab this center of this arc, bring it around, 
Now I can either lock it into place like this, or sometimes if you go out a little further, you can see it's not really a nice clean number. I can actually just hit 90, type it in, enter, boom, enter twice, and it'll OK there. So I'm going to go ahead and OK that. OK. So we are good to go. Now, I don't know why it changed the color of that model. It's kind of annoying. Let's see if I can't get it. If not, it's going to stay purple. So I'll select my model, go into model prep, and I will clear all. Let's see if that does anything. No. Oh, well, we'll work with the purple model. So one thing I do want to do is save this frequently. So I'm going to go into file. I'm going to go ahead and save. I'll actually save it as. I'll browse here. I've got a ton of stuff. So I'm just going to, for now, save this to my desktop. You can save it to wherever you'd like. Just so I have it. OK. So we're almost ready to create tool paths. What I want to go do now is do stock setup. Right, click my stock setup, brings up a window, and right here I can either, if I know the block size of my material, let's say it's aluminum maybe, I can just manually enter those values in. I could also do a bonding box where I create a box around this, end selection, and now I have my numbers here. Um, or I could do all entities. I like to do all entities if it's just a part sitting right here. It auto populates it. Now I'm going to assume that maybe my block is a little bit bigger. So I'm going to say 2.125 for the, the y value. Oops. Syntax is important. And then we'll do 4.12, sorry, 4.125. And then one inch, set this offset here to zero. I don't know why it's like that, but we'll see what that looks like. And you always want to make sure that your stock is on display here. So one inch is good because you can see we've got a good bit of material down here at the bottom where we're going to clamp onto. So if I right click and go into the top view, Oopsies. I'll go ahead and fit that to my screen as well. Much easier to see. All right, so we are good to go. And we can start creating some toolpaths now. So looking at this, coming from a machining background, I've always looked at machining as you want to cut as much material away as quickly as possible. So you want to typically start with the bigger features first in that case the pocket, and then also cutting the outside perimeter, then hitting this open pocket here, and then also then coming in and finally hitting these uh, holes right here. All right, so let's go ahead and pause, and we'll come back in the next video, and we'll get started on our toolpaths.